What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Flipping Bats. We are back Woo! with the first episode of the offseason. I told you we wouldn't be gone long, but we are now back in studio to talk about this upcoming offseason, free agency, where we think people are going to sign, specifically the biggest free agent we've ever seen, Shohei Otani, some of the new managerial hirings that have already happened, what's to come with uh, the four vacancies that are still out there, as well, Alex, as a 2024 World Series prediction. A look ahead for next year, a look back at what we just saw in the postseason. This one is going to be a lot of fun. Let's get to it. Five ball, onto the track, at the wall, it's gone! Home run! Turns on a ball, deep right field, and gone! What a game, what a moment. What is up, my friends? We are back in studio like we never left, Alex. Actually, it does feel like we left it's for like, a long, long time. <laughs> it feels like we were on the road forever. That was such like a wild, crazy, cool, exhausting experience. Yep. I slept through an entire day the first day we got back. Did you too? Yep. Yeah. No, I, was, I feel like I could have slept for a week, but like needed to get back into the swing of things. Definitely. But like, how cool was that? Like, I, I kind of remind myself sometimes, like, we were the last ones on the field after the Rangers won yeah, the World Series. Yeah, we were playing Series. catch out on the field, like... Like, just our whole team. We were just standing out there for, like, an hour after yeah. the everyone else left. And it was finally like, okay, guys, time to go. You're like, but we're having so much fun. Yeah, it was really cool. But, Alex, for the final time, uh, we have to update the Let's wall. Because the champs, it is official for the last time... Put it in the wall. The Texas Rangers are World Series champions, thus completing our beautiful and wild and chaotic playoff bracket that nobody saw coming. I mean, I'm just so happy for that fan base that has been waiting the entire time that this franchise has been around. The first time they are World Series champions. Yeah. I don't know if you watched any of the parade. There was somewhere between 500 and 700,000 fans yeah. there cheering them on. I mean, they not only made history with their first World Series in franchise history, but then they won every single game on the road with the longest playoff road streak ever, which had never happened. I mean, this team was so impressive. I am so happy for the Rangers and the Rangers fan base. They never lost on the road. They never lost it on the really road. is wild. I, I've never seen anything like it. They went undefeated on this entire run on the road. They absolutely deserved to win the World Series. The way this team was built was fascinating. The, the World Series, the way both of those teams were built, I thought was fascinating. It was sure. crazy because they both did it in two completely yep. different ways. You have the Rangers who kind of paid and traded for everybody. And then you have the D-backs who had these young players that were creating yeah. chaos and playing small ball. Now, when you see both of these, do you think any teams now who, who watch this, the two teams get to the World Series, will then copy their models moving forward? Yes. How uh, could you not? And the, the GM meetings are happening as we speak. Yep. And, uh, you know, one of the GMs came out and said it, I believe it was anonymous, so I, but came out and said for the first time ever, there are 29 teams that are legitimately talking about winning and wanting to win. And obviously the 30th being the Oakland A's, who have, <laughs> they, they're basically going to try and keep their payroll as low as possible. But the GM did say, I've never seen, I've yeah. never seen this. Love 29 that. teams are here talking about winning. And the why now becomes there's different ways to do it. Mm -hmm. These rules changed everything. everything. The Arizona Diamondbacks are not in the World Series if it wasn't for the new rules put into place. They were perfectly built, and they didn't know these rules were coming, so they kind of just were already like this team that was able to, by far the most, able to benefit from the new rules. So you can go about it that way. A younger team that's fast and quick and plays Old school baseball, mm -hmm. get on base, bunt them over, score, run, steal bases, all that stuff. And then you could also win like the Texas Rangers did, which is, okay, we're just going to tear it all up and completely rebuild, and we're going to do it with money. Yep. So you know what I get tired of is, you know, you hear this, this narrative was out there, especially with the Mets and Padres this year of, oh, look, you know, spending money doesn't work. What's the point? Steve Cohn, why would you spend money? The Padres spend all this money. It doesn't work. Well, that's the perfect narrative out there for all these GMs and owners, right? Well, oh, no, 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 it doesn't work. Well, look at the Texas Rangers. Mm -hmm. Look at their blueprint. It's spend money, 
pay half a billion dollars for a middle infield and then go spend money on a bona fide ace. And next thing you know, we're World Series champions. So as much as people want to talk about that narrative out there, yeah, it didn't work for the Mets and Padres. It was a fiasco of a season, but it wasn't because they didn't, it wasn't because they spent money. It just didn't work. And there was a lot of underperformance. The Texas Rangers proved on the other side, the complete contrast of the Arizona Diamondbacks, spend money and you can win championships. It works. It worked for them, but it was fascinating seeing those two teams and their polar opposite ways of getting there being there and winning the World Series. Now, the Rangers not only spent money, they went out and got a legendary manager in Bruce Bochy, who yeah. was a World Series winner. So how much not only does going out and spending the money, but having the right fit of a manager matter in that position? I think we heard it from the players themselves. Yeah. You know, like I could sit here and tell you it, it makes a big difference, and I do believe it does. But from every player out there on the Rangers, they would talk at to no end about Bruce Bochy and what he meant to that team, it means so much. It does. To, to have a guy that's been there, that's done that, you trust every move he makes, which Everything. is super important. He didn't press the panic button out on the mound, which we see all the time now as managers, like, oh, the analytics say to take him out. No, there weren't much analytics happening in this World Series and playoff run for the Texas Rangers, and it worked out perfectly. Love that hire for him. He said he was sitting on the couch watching and just thinking about baseball yeah. when the Rangers called him. was like, hey, you want to manage? And he's like, hmm. Sure. sure. <laughs> and now he's out there winning the World Let's Series. Let's go win a World Series. So obviously, I mean, this was the coolest moment in the playoffs. Rangers winning their first World Series in franchise history. Yeah. But on the opposite side, what do you think was the biggest disappointment this postseason? Oh, man. Um, There's a couple things to choose from here. Actually, more. I felt Five. like I could have worn my cowboy boots a few more times. Pretty disappointed that I didn't wear those enough. Uh, that was one of my biggest disappointments. Uh, what do you mean you lived in them? You became cowboy well, there men. there were a couple cowboy you, like, men. Cowboy men. You, like, morphed into, like, a new character, a new persona. Um, biggest disappointment is the Atlanta Braves. Mm. I, I went on for months about how this is the greatest offense that I, maybe I've ever seen, but certainly the greatest Braves, the, the greatest Atlanta Braves team I've seen, and John Smoltz clarified, you reiterated that yeah. point and said, yeah, I, you know, like, and he was a part of a lot of those teams. I, I think this might be the greatest Atlanta Braves team we've seen. And then they go out and win one game in the postseason and, and don't get past the Phillies, who were very good, and that was always going to be, I think, their toughest matchup in the playoffs. But to just lay an egg like they did, the offense didn't show up. It was just, with all the expectations, I think they were the World Series favorites mm -hmm. going into the postseason and they just, they let me down. They were my pick to get to the World Series. They let their fans down. Just an, an embarrassing run in the playoffs this year when I think they had one of the greatest teams that we've seen. They had it on the pitching side, but offensively is where they separated themselves all year long, one through nine, fantastic. And it was just not very good this year or this postseason. Yeah, uh, my biggest disappointment kind of one-upped your biggest disappointment because they didn't even win a game this postseason the Dodgers once again are one of the best regular season teams top to bottom they find ways to win they had two guys on their team just as the Braves did that were in the MVP conversation towards the end of the season that were just on fire I mean the Dodgers went on a stretch that was absolutely incredible we even talked about it did they peak too soon nah they'll probably figure it out they're not going to make the same mistake they did last year <laughs> wrong they end up facing their division rival d-backs and get swept by the d-backs something that i don't think anybody saw coming into that series for some reason the dodgers cannot figure out how to win come october and that is a huge issue and that's something that they need to figure out because it's hard to even wrap your head around when we saw what was happening from their starting pitching to mookie and freddie combining for only one hit in that series yeah. like it was just it was hard to explain. It was hard to watch. It was hard to comprehend. Something is very wrong come October for the Dodgers. That was my biggest disappointment, and they need to make some kind of, I don't know, move, figure out what went wrong, and, and not make that same mistake for a second year in a row. They have October issues, and that's the yeah. reason that they are not my that, – that's why I didn't pick mm. them. Did you, was it a disappointment the season that the Oakland A's had in the regular season? No, it wasn't, because we expected it. Was it a disappointment, the Dodgers in the postseason? No, it wasn't, 
because we expected it. They don't have the pitching to win in October. And that could change this offseason mm -hmm. and into next year, certainly. But it didn't – did it surprise me they got swept? Sure. But did I expect them to win the World Series? No. They didn't have the pitching. They have an October problem, a big one, and it's time they fix it. And I don't know how they fix it because it's getting worse. Clayton yeah. Kershaw getting surgery. But they need an ace. They need two – they need an ace and a co-ace. They need to go out and be aggressive for pitching. Yeah. So – we're going to talk all about the Shohei sweepstakes in a yeah. little while, but, you know, I, I think many people consider him the favorite to go there, but in the short term, he ain't fixing the pitching issues. No. So they have a lot of work to do this offseason, and I'm very interested in, in how and what they decide to do. Yeah, so. it's, it's going to be exciting, and I, th I think the Shohei piece moving is going to be, yeah. obviously, the, what we're all watching, but the first one to go and then figure out where everyone else goes. Yeah. Alex, how... Uh, how much sleep did you get your first night back in L.A.? I slept until 12.30 our, our Dude, first day back we, in Los I got Angeles. home at 1. I immediately slept until 5, woke up for three hours, and then went to bed again at 8 p.m. and slept all the way till yeah. 11 a.m. the next day. I hibernated. I was just I like, hibernated. That's I was like, mm, I coma slept. It's just like, bye. That's exactly what I did. Yeah, it was I feel good. fresh. We I needed it, right? Needed it. We feel great. We feel back. And you know what? It's never too early to give our 2024 World Series predictions because we just got back from the 2023 yep. World Series. So let's look ahead to next year. What's your hot take and prediction? Wow. Yep. World Series prediction. Let's give it Show to me. Show one of the offseason. Let's go. All right. I am going to go with the Philadelphia Phillies over the Baltimore Orioles. I will take the Ooh. Phillies to win the World Series next year. I think both teams go out and add some pitching. I mm -hmm. think it's needed in both areas. And, yeah, that's my prediction. Way too early. but Way too early? early. Also, like, what? I also have the Phillies winning over the Mariners. Now, I, this is also I, if the Mariners end up getting Shohei Otani, I feel <laughs> like they have a chance to immediately get to the World Series. That's a team that if you just plug and play Otani in that team, I think they have what it takes to make it far into the postseason. And then the Phillies, I mean, they've gotten so close the last two years. They have the pieces. They're going to need another big arm, another co-ace. And if they can do that, I feel like they got that chip on their shoulder that they're going to get there, and it's finally their time to win. So I know I'm about to talk all about free yeah. agency and Shohei and stuff, but does this mean you you think Shohei is going to the Mariners? No, That's I you... think he's going to go to the Dodgers. Well, then but why would you say? Why would you pick the Mariners? It's a win-win either way. So if he goes to the Dodgers, I'm going to feel good about <laughs> it. But then if he goes to the Mariners, my pick is going to be great. But they're your World Series pick. Yeah, But I you're know. making it dependent on Shohei going yep. there, but you don't think he's doesn't going there. It doesn't make sense. He might. It's sense. a top two. I think Dodgers, Mariners are his, like, top two spots. I know. I'm weird. Does it make you uncomfortable? No. <laughs> Just confused. But it's yeah, okay. It's okay. That's what we do. All right. We both have the Phillies winning, which means congratulations wow. to one of the other 29 teams because <laughs> the Phillies are absolutely not winning the World Series now. I love that. All right. Yeah. Let's talk... Uh, Oh, you know what we have to talk about first? Our draft. Wait. Start of the postseason. Wait. Here's what we did. We had all 12 teams. That's how many make the playoffs, right? Yep. 12 teams. Alex and I did a little draft. And for every team, we, we each got six teams. And for every game that that team won, we would get one point. And it all came down to the World Series. And what I needed to even tie was a Texas Rangers sweep of the Arizona Diamondbacks, but it did not happen. The Diamondbacks won one game, which means Alex won hey. 21 to 20 hey. our playoff <laughs> draft. And you know, this kind of carried over from tail of the tape. We were tied yeah. even at the end of the season. So we said whoever ended up winning this draft was kind of that year long bet that we had. And now you have to wear tiny hands for an entire episode and I can't wait. Was it an entire episode? Yep, it is. Tiny hands for an entire episode. Great. You're welcome. Can't wait. I'm going to give you the ones that were the fingernails are painted, too. You're going to look very beautiful. Thank you. Can't wait. Tiny hands. Uh, so, yeah, 2120. Congrats on that. Thank you. Congrats to the Texas Rangers. Congrats to us on being back in studio. It's officially the offseason, Alex. So, oh, that means. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about some of the uh, big hirings that have already been made on the managerial side of things. 
Okay, now let's get into some new hirings because teams did not waste any time hiring their new staff, starting with the Marlins, who hired Peter Bendix as their new head of baseball operations. And then we had three manager spots filled so far since we filmed this show. Guardians hire Stephen Vogt as their manager. Mets hire Carlos Mendoza. And Cubs hire Craig Council as their manager. Which manager hire here makes the most sense to you? A lot of movement already, Alex. A lot of movement. From seven teams that needed a new manager to already we're down to four with with all these new hires. I, there, there was just a lot of confusion for me, I'd say, in, in day one of all these hirings. One, I, I know we're going to talk managers here, but Peter Bendix for the Marlins. I'm so confused what the Marlins are doing. Yeah, that was a Kim mess. Ang was awesome. And... Quite, and I, I don't, you know, we don't know the ins and outs of what happened or why or, or whatever, but I know that she did a fantastic job and decided she the team to around. part ways, which to me says, look, the truth of the matter is you had Derek Jeter in a role there. You had Kim Ang in a role there and they've both decided whatever's I, I want out. Yeah. So I, look, I, I don't know much about this. Peter Bendix guy or the hire, but I do know that the situation going on there in Miami hopefully needs to get better. And, and maybe it involves ownership needing to buy into a situation a little bit more and, and want to win because you know, you, you have very talented, bright people in the door mm -hmm. that end up leaving and, and going elsewhere. Like so some of the best in the biz right. who want to be like, I can't do this. I'm out. Exactly. So managerial wise, um, How'd you, what, what's the question? Which hire makes the most sense? Which hire makes the most sense? Uh, a confusing one, but it makes the most sense to me is Craig Council. Literally just shifting NL Central teams. Yeah. Like rivals going from the Brewers to the Cubs for five years, $40 million, which is the highest paid manager Ooh. ever. I like Craig Council a lot. To me, this, um, I feel like I've been saying it for the last few years with the Brewers it almost just feels like an unwillingness to fully buy in. And I don't feel that way with the Cubs. I think they have a willingness to fully buy in. I think they just had to tear it down for a couple of years. And now they're on the cusp of being really good again and bringing in a guy like Craig council, who I think has done a fantastic job. I, I love the pickup and his contract expired with the, with the brew crew. I think, I, I think it was a big shock to the baseball world to just see him switch spots over to the Cubs, but I love it. Great hire. Love Craig council. Uh, I will go with him. Uh, another that was, but I will say confusing. Another one of those that is confusing to me is Stephen Vote with the Guardians. He was playing. I mean, he's last year, fresh, fresh out of the bigs, and now he's just got a managerial job. How do you know to make that transition that quick? Well, okay, so look, catchers are like the prize. They are. That's just what happens. You you play in the big leagues, you catch, you you go become a manager. We saw it with David Ross with yeah. the Cubs. Obviously, that's not happening anymore because David yep. Ross is, is is now out of a job there. But not shocking, but a little bit shocking. So, um, but yeah, he's now in as the Guardians manager. So, so is, most is that your most surprising move? No, my most surprising move is Carlos Mendoza to the Mets. Okay, explain. Well, I don't really know the guy. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know much about him at all. He was the bench coach for the Yankees for what four or five years. So he's staying in New York, uh, kind of. Aaron Boone's right-hand man. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I just feel like you have this team that's owned by Steve Cohen, who at every turn is making this, like, big splash, right? Like, bringing in Buck Showalter, a, a legendary manager, and then bringing in Justin and, and Max Scherzer and, you know, all these big pieces making big splashes along the way. And that didn't work, and you tear it all down. But then you bring in a big, like, GM and Stearns and and now you look and it's like the new managerial hiring this is going to be big Craig Council was linked there and then it's okay that's not going to happen then Carlos Mendoza I, I don't know I don't have much for you I know I'm surprised I know I'm a bit confused um he's been linked to places before he's interviewed quite a bit over the last few years he interviewed with the Tigers but they ended up hiring AJ Hinch I I just I don't know I don't know. That's why it's the most surprising. To me. Maybe he has a really good connection with the players that we're unaware of, right? Because he's the bench coach. Now they're building from within with the Mets. As you mentioned, they took the big swings. They got your brother. They got all these big names that didn't work out. Then they kind of started fresh, traded everybody away, build up the farm system even more. So now you're going to have younger guys kind of 
rebuilding this Mets team, and maybe he has a great connection with young players, and young players connect with him. How would how? But he we doesn't know. know the young players at the Mets. He's over at the Yankees, so like he, there's no connection. I mean, I'm sure it's baseball's a small circle, yeah. right? Like people know each other, but like there's not this connection from within. I mean, you might be right, but also it's still like a bit confusing. I don't know. There were plenty of, I don't know. I don't know. That's yeah. my answer. That's why it's surprising, Alex, because yeah. I just don't know. It is. It's and as of now, me. us taping this show, there's still four manager spots that are open. Padres, Angels, Astros, Brewers. <sighs> Which is the most crucial there? Somebody out there has to be looking at that Astros job thing. That's the greatest job you could possibly right? get. Just kind of like, slot right into team, a team that can go to Dusty's the World Series. obviously retiring. Yeah. But this team is still so good. And it's like, that's the dream job. Who's going to get that now? I don't know. I I think Joe Espada for years, another bench coach, He's he's been linked to jobs for years. But at a certain point, he's been linked there to Houston and other places for years and then goes to interview places and then doesn't get jobs. So is he interviewing poorly? Mm. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know what happens in Houston. I don't know what happens in either of these places. I have seen Buck Showalter mentioned a lot with the angels. Um, but now the brewers are in need of a job. That'd be really funny if they go get David Ross, <laughs> just a just big old switcheroo. Good luck. Good work with this, but now hopefully they work with you. Yeah. Padres are an exciting job. I would I love to see. Mike Schilt, get that job. I mean, you need someone that can handle big personalities, big talent that, as we heard, might not always get along necessarily in the clubhouse and locker room. Like, you need a leader. You need someone that can, like, handle and control this bunch. Well, that's what you thought you had in Bob Melvin. <laughs> that didn't work out. No. I would no, love no. to see Schilt get the job. He okay. was a guy over with the Cardinals uh, years ago when they were really good. And the team just decided to go in a more analytical direction. And very publicly, Schilt was want, wanted control of the lineup and the team and wanted to manage the mm -hmm. team. And basically, after making the playoffs every year and being really good, the organization told him, we just have a different view and a different philosophy and we're going to go in a different direction because basically <laughs> he wouldn't be the, the punching bag down on the field that was yeah. just like the the guy down on the field that was doing exactly what the organization wanted to. So they parted ways. And now he's been with the Padres. I would love for a guy like that to step in and have control and, and be able to lead a team without all these analytics being involved. And look, there is a place for analytics, mm -hmm. but what I hate is when it comes down to, this is how the, just the front office is running the team because numbers on a piece of paper say that Mike Schultz, not going to be that guy. I don't think the Padres are a team that needs that. I think they need a leader. I think he's yeah, able to do. do that. I would love, I, and I've seen him rumored there a good bit. I would love to see that happen. But yeah, four remaining Padres, Astros, Angels, Brewers, all looking for a manager. Guardians now have Steven Vogt. Mets have Carlos Mendoza. And the Cubs have the new highest paid manager ever Whew. in Craig Council. This is exciting. I feel like these last four are going to happen pretty quickly because you want to get your manager. Well, you need to quickly. because yesterday was officially the first day of free agency. Which means we are officially on Shohei Otani watch. Where is he going to end up? The biggest name in free agency this year. We know his number one goal is to be on a team that can win and win now. So where do you think his top three landing spots are? And do you think the way the postseason kind of panned out, did that change anything? Uh, man. Alex, it's day one of our off-season show, and you're hitting me with the hard-hitting questions. We're going here. in. All right, free agency. Where's Shohei <laughs> yeah. going? Um, That's what everyone wants to know. This is obviously the biggest question of the off-season and the biggest free agent in maybe sports history. Yeah. I mean, if we're being honest, he's going to get um, pre-injury. He was going to get, I think, probably six hundred plus million. I think now we're still looking at about a half a billion dollars. Um, Crazy. And he's going to be worth every penny both on the field and when he does come back pitching, but off the field as well. He's worth so much to an organization with everything that comes along with him, including merchandise sales, Japan, butts and seats, <laughs> the entire, and entire country. country. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this hasn't changed a ton for me. Okay. I still think the leading, the front runner in all of this is the Dodgers. I just think it makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. um, it's a place he's comfortable with. It's a team that is competitive and and good enough to win in the regular season regular season dynasty Ugh. 
I don't even. Um, Dodgers hurts. are front runners. Yeah. Look, I'll give you a top three. Okay. Alex, you know what I will say? Change things. Hmm. I, I don't think that I, I thought the Giants were big players. I don't think they're there yet. I, I Are the Giants one Shohei Otani away from being World Series champs? No. I, I don't think so. I, I really don't. Um, so to me, there's a, they're a name that's been thrown out a ton, and I know they have the money to go do it. I just I don't see it happening. All right, top three. One, give me the Los Angeles Dodgers. Woo! Two, this is a surprise. Okay. Give me the Chicago Cubs. Whoa. Cubs were big time players the first time around. Yeah. And then I think the decision just came down to I want to be on the West Coast, that sort of thing. I think the Cubs are back to being a big time player. I think they have the money. I think they have the want. If you think for once, just look at what's happening. They were on the cusp of the playoffs. They're one say a Suzuki catch away from being in the playoffs and the entire playoff dynamic being completely different here, by the way, the, the diamondbacks don't get in the playoffs. If say a Suzuki catches that ball in right field against the Braves, and then they don't get to the world series because they obviously aren't in the playoffs. But you also have Cody Bellinger who just opted out and opted for free agency. Correct. Obviously though, he opted, he, he got, yeah. he's going to get paid now. So what are they back to my original point? Went okay. down a side tangent. Yes, we did. You think they're going to sign the manager for the most money of all time and just be like, all right, we're good. No, they're going to make a big splash this off season. And I could see it. I can envision it. Shohei at Wrigley with the bleachers going crazy for him. Wrigley, it just would be so cool. So give me the Cubs on that list. At number two. And third, give me the Mariners. Mm. A team that needs offense. Yep is in a good position right now pitching wise. So you're not afraid to sign Shohei and be like, okay, we'll get him on the mound in a year, mm -hmm. but we're, we're okay. A year without him on the mound. We just need offense. Uh, it's a place that I think he would like to be. He's spent off seasons up there. Um, yeah. So give me the Dodgers. I would say right now as a clear number one yeah. and then a big jump down. Give me Cubs Mariners. Okay. But I think we're looking at the Dodgers here. Yeah, I, I Dodgers Mariners I I agree hard with. Cubs was kind of a a curveball there. But we're I can see it. You're painting the picture. Yeah. Nobody knows. Like this is we are officially on Shohei Otani watch. This is going to be insane. I think they're on I I think they're on a short list. I know it's a bit of a I, I know it's a bit of a surprise team to throw in there, but I, I think there's a I think there's five teams that I mean, I think there's like 10 teams that are in yeah. on him and will try. I think the Cubs are on a short list here. Okay. And then, yeah, I mean, there's just a few teams that, you there's know, a lot. Like, he ain't going to be signing with the, no. the A's. No. It and once that piece falls, I think a lot of other pieces are going to fall. Absolutely. But there's a lot of top arms that are free agents. I mean, we have a World Series champ. We have a possible Cy Young winner. We have one of the best closers in the game, an international superstar. Who needs to be aggressive to go after these arms right now? A lot of people. A lot of teams. A lot of teams need pitching. But some of those names you mentioned, we got Blake Snell, mm -hmm. Yoshinobu Yamamoto, who's a stud. We saw him in the World Baseball Classic. He's great. He's being posted. He will be playing in Major League Baseball next year. It's just a matter of who is going to sign him. Jordan Montgomery, Aaron Nola, Josh Hader, Sonny Gray, Marcus Stroman. Like, it's we insane. Have aces. We have great closers. So offense leaves a bit to the imagination of the free agent market this uh -huh. year. But pitching wise, there are game changers out there mm -hmm. big time. I mean, guys that can go win you a World Series. So uh, teams that need to be really aggressive. Orioles, yep. Orioles, Orioles, yep. first and foremost, they need to be so aggressive pitching wise. If they have another offseason. <laughs> oh, God, about to get fired up. Yep. If they have another offseason where they just sit still and don't do anything on the pitching side, I'm going to be pissed. Because this team is so ready, and it was so glaringly obvious in the postseason that they're just missing an ace or two. And you got to go out and do something. This team is ready now. The window is open. Many times in this, this, throughout this season, when I had Smoltz on every week, we would talk about, you don't get a window. It's not like you need to, when the window's open, go for so. it. And it just feels like, especially with what we heard the, GM and owner of the team say, or the ownership say last year or during the season, 
we're not going to be able to afford to pay all these guys, blah, blah, blah. Well, then you have them right now. Mm -hmm. They're ready to win. They were the number one seed in the American League. Go get pitching and go win with this team. I would love to see the Orioles get two guys on this list. Go get a go get the big splash. Go get Blake Snell. I don't think Blake Snell is going to sign in Baltimore, but man, that'd be cool. Go get Jordan Montgomery. How about Aaron Nola? I'm going to name all these names. Why? Yeah. Because some, they need to sign somebody. Well, and as we saw during the playoffs, you need a strong ace. You need almost a, a second ace. And then you need a third pitcher that you trust to win you a game in the postseason. You need three solid pitchers, possibly a one-two ace situation if you want to make it to the World Series. The, the blueprint has shown itself for a few years at this point. Yeah. It, 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 you need an ace. You need a co-ace. And you need a third guy that steps up. This year, look at both of the teams. Mm -hmm. Let's let's talk Diamondbacks. You had Gallon, you had Merrill Kelly. These might not be the biggest superstar names in the world, but they were an ace and a co-ace. And then Brandon Fott really stepped up. Yep. For the Rangers, you had Nathan Eovaldi and Jordan Montgomery. And then you ran into an issue with a third of what, what are they going to do? Where are they going to go? And and that became an issue every time it got to that Every spot. time. Kind of had and Scherzer. Then, Heaney kind of stepped up one time, not another time. It was just... Last, Roll the year, dice. See what last happens. year with the Phillies, the Phillies were a surprise team to make the world series, but, but why? Well, Zach Wheeler, Aaron Nola, and then Ranger Suarez stepped up the yep. Astros. You had Justin Framber and Christian Javier stuff. The blueprints there. You need three starters and the, the Orioles just don't have that right now. Go out and get one or two guys mm -hmm. and pair that with what you have in the rotation already. I, I would be feeling good about that. So Orioles for me and, uh, God, I mean, everybody. Do you see him. Philly going after a guy like Blake Snell? Well, so they're, Aaron Nola is now gone. That's what I'm saying. They need another <sighs> big arm or more of like a Jordan Montgomery. Yeah, I what could fits? see them signing like Jordan. I don't think they go like the ace route. I think they, I think Jordan Montgomery would be great there paired with like a, with Zach Wheeler, yeah. Andrew Suarez, Sonny Gray. I could see, I could see Marcus Stroman there. A uh, uh, side point, okay. Cubs. Pitching as well. Marcus Stroman's a free agent. You, you need pitching. I really like what they have there. Um, Dansby and, and Nico Horner up the middle, two gold glove guys. Like, I, I like what they're building. Now you need pitching. Orioles are first in mind. What about Dodgers? Obviously, that was their biggest weakness, came like October. And then obviously, their hitters forget how to hit in the postseason, <laughs> but they need pitching. They need an ace. Kershaw just had surgery. Don't have Arias anymore. Like, oh, they needed. Yeah, they I, need a solid. Look, we could go down. I, I think the conversation would more so come of like the shorter conversation would be which teams don't need pitching. Eh, Obviously, true. these teams need pitching. Obviously, the Dodgers are one of those. It is the sole reason why I didn't think they would win the World Series this year or now even that, win a postseason game. Yeah, obviously, yeah. <laughs> then it became a different issue that they just yeah. couldn't hit in October as well, yeah. which I didn't see that coming. I don't think but anyone did. They need pitching. There's so. There are pitchers out there, and there are a lot of teams that need pitching. Orioles, Dodgers, Cubs all come to mind for sure. It's going to be exciting. It will be. It all started yesterday, and now it's all going to play out. Poetic. Thank you. Very Talking nice. about it. Yep. So free agency is going to be wild, Alex. Yes, Absolutely it is. wild this year. I'm excited to see it. And I think you said it earlier. I don't think these dominoes start falling, at least with most teams until Shohei signs. And I don't think that's happening anytime soon. It might be quiet for a little really? while. Really? Yeah. I mean, you got to listen to every offer now that you're like officially a free agent as of yesterday. Like, what is that process? Like, he's just going to wait, kind of feel it out, let everybody come in, see what happens. And then, I don't know. This one feels right. Let's go. Let's do it. Yeah, it's going to be weird. It's unprecedented. But, I, 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 you know, I go back and forth on whether the he, like, you know, you hear all the time, players are going to wait for so-and-so to sign, and then that sets the market. Shohei ain't setting the market no, for anybody. He's his, he's own, his market. own market. Yeah. So it's not like players are going to be like, I want to see what Shohei gets. Well, of course you do. But yeah. it, you're, you ain't getting that. No. <laughs> so we might see players signing a little earlier. Um, we'll see. I don't know. I'm excited about it. Cody Bellinger on the offensive side is the big name. Mm -hmm. Uh, and really one of, he's definitely by far the biggest name this offseason. What's he going to get? He was, I think he was 17 million last year, which was kind of like a, are you going to get 
not good Cody uh-huh. Bellinger or MVP. And it was much closer to that MVP level Cody Bellinger. So he's going to get paid, Happy which is him. why he opted out. Mm-hmm. We'll see where he goes. What do the Yankees do this off season? Oh. There's rumors of Juan Soto out there being traded. He's Ooh. obviously not a free agent, but I yep. do think Juan Soto is going to get moved. There's just a lot that could happen, Alex. I'm excited for it. Flipping bats will be here all off season. Keeping you updated on every move that happens. Yeah. We're going to have a good time. We're still going to be here with you guys every week. Yeah, absolutely. So we shall see. Yeah. Alex. That was fun. That was fun. We're back. We're back in studio. We have the award show coming up uh, very soon. We'll do an award preview show. And then once everything is determined, MVP, Cy Young, Rookie of the Year, Manager of the Year, all of those. Uh, We'll be there for you after that as well. But we'll do the preview show next week and uh, be there for all of that as well. So, Alex, we are back in studio. We're back, baby. It feels nice. It feels good to be back. Before you know it, opening day will be here. (laughs) You You were counting down the days when we signed off at the World Series. It was 148. Yeah. So now we're around, what, 140? Uh, Don't make me math. About 140. But we'll be here every step of the way. Thank you all for listening. Uh, make sure you are all subscribed wherever you listen to your podcast, Apple, Spotify. You can also watch on Spotify as well. So make sure you're subscribed, following, and watching there. We're also on all social media, including YouTube, where you can watch every single thing we do. Also on TikTok, at Flippin' Bats Pod for all of them. But that does it for today, my friends. Thank you all for listening. And happy free agency, everyone. Until next time, 